Anyways, thank you for being here. It's a great turnout. This is the second series of community meetings that we're holding on the general plan update. We, we've concluded the first series, which was to get us the vision and values, which you see on the wall. And now we're getting ready to start on embarking on the second series of meetings, which is really exciting, because now we're going to get down to the how. How do we get this done? And so tonight it'll start with a presentation uh, and some discussion on the study areas workshop. So I'm going to turn things over quickly to Nando to do some announcements. Uh, and then it'll get back to Julia and we'll get started. But thank you again for being, ever, being here, everyone. Muy buenas noches. Si hay alguien que necesite traducción al español, por favor, se acerque, que levante la mano, se acerque conmigo para pasarle esto o acercarme yo para traducir con ellos. Gracias. Bienvenidos. Ok, so, um, hi everyone. <coughs> Um, before we start, just a quick uh, show of hands, if this is your first general planned uh, meeting. So we have a few, thank you for coming, and show a hand for those that have been to one or more of, of general plan meetings. Wow, great. <clears throat> So um, we're here today. Um, this is the second workshop. Um, we also had another one on Saturday um, to help have the community help identify study areas. And so let's get started. <clears throat> So just real quickly, um, we're going to go ahead. This is also on the agenda that's uh, in front of you. Um, we're going to go do introductions, presentation, group discussion, and then exercise. Um, and then there will be a chance for each facilitated table to report back. And then we'll talk about next steps in the process. Um, so real quickly, in 90 seconds, um, we're asking you to partner up with somebody you don't know and do a brief introduction, uh, your name, and what brought you here today. And also, what do you hope to hear, learn, and share? And just in case you haven't, you don't know what the proper handshake is, there's a little uh, instruction here. <clears throat> so let's get started. 90 seconds. <laughs> uh, so you guys, uh, we're back to the workshop. Thank you very much. You guys did introductions. <clears throat> you know each other, uh, have met each other. So thank you for doing that. Um, <clears throat> we want to go ahead and move on to the next thing. So our goals for today, I'm hoping that everybody can see it from the back. Um, this is intended to be an inclusive and informed uh, workshop, allowing dialogue, but also information sharing. There's some uh, historic and future trends that we will be sharing as part of this workshop. Um, part of this is also uh, it, with the tables and the way that um, we're hoping that you know folks are seated next to people that you don't know. You're meeting new community members and be able to connect, um, get to know each other a little bit, and develop a shared sense of where we're going. So you know the future of San Mateo is from all of us, um, and so this is shared future for us. We're also going to be asking you to help identify geographic areas or sites or just opportunities for the city to look at as we're thinking about the future, and. You know, Generally speaking, this is the general plan update process. It's a multi-year community planning process. And so this is just one step um, in, in one source of input. Um, you know, we, we have the Saturday workshop. We have this workshop today. We're also going to be having a general plan subcommittee meeting on June 20, 26. And so this is one source of input um, from community members. And again, this is a, 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 long, uh, a long process and there will be multiple opportunities for community input. <clears throat> so just a brief history of San Mateo. Everybody remembers what it was like in 1872, right? <laughs> no. Um, so San Mateo, you know, when, uh, a while ago, uh, we started out as a, a much smaller community. Um, as you can see, by the 1938s, you know, that's definitely more than doubled. And then today, we're definitely a built-out community. And so um, as a community, we've changed uh, locally. Um, but the trend is also evident you know, throughout the county. So it's not just San Mateo that has grown, but it's also the county. So uh, some of you may have seen these photos before. Um, turn of the century, this is downtown San Mateo at the rail uh, station, the train station that we had. Um, 
The next photo is 2019, and this is an adaptive reuse of the old Baywood Theater building that was there in the 1930s. And so, um, you know, buildings that we have in downtown are being repurposed for different uses, and so that's an example of that. Um, but it is still part of our downtown and what we cherish in, in terms of the community, the heart of San Mateo. And so as we think about, you know, the future, you know, think about all different parts of San Mateo and what that could be. Um, and then most importantly, you know, as communities grow, it's, it's important for us to think ahead, plan for the future. Um, and so we're hoping that with your input today, you can help us, you know, sort of imagine that future and help us plan step one of helping to plan that. So, again, you know, planning for tomorrow today is really important. And part of this is also, you know, it's not just something that's important for us to do, but we also have state requirements. Um, the state requires that jurisdictions, cities, regularly plan for, for uh, updates of their general plan, plan for growth, uh, plan for housing. And so the, re the required uh, updates are usually every 10 years. The housing element, it's about every eight years. Um, in addition to uh, state requirements, there's also regional obligations. So typically the state will tell the regional area, the Bay Area region, there's a certain amount of housing that you need to plan for. And so you, some of you may have heard of RENA numbers that comes, these are sort of fair share housing numbers that come from the state. It comes down to the Bay Area region and then that's distributed to each uh, city uh, jurisdiction. In addition to just housing as a, as a shared responsibility, there's also transportation and climate change. So none of these things is something that one jurisdiction can hope to solve by itself. And so we need to work with other agencies near us. Um, and so this, you know, regional obligations and collaboration is really, really important as we go forward. The other thing that's uh, coming out of all of the workshops and the community conversations and just one-on-one -on -one conversations with community members is, you know, we, we um, did our general plan update, the last one, I'll cover this in a little bit, but we did our general plan update in 2010. That was in the middle of the Great Recession. The goals and policies that were established by the, the community at that time, and also the infrastructure improvements that were identified at that time, are not reflective of the you know, tremendous economic growth that we've seen recently. And so, you know, I think what we're trying to do today, um, what we've been asking community members to do is help us you know, come up with what it is that we need to consider as we grow. The community has already uh, established a vision statement and you'll see that on the walls um, with shared vision and values. Um, but as we think about the future, we also need to think about how can we improve all the different things that we hope to achieve with the vision and values. What else do we need to consider to be able to achieve that? And all of this is woven together in terms of quality of life for each of us today and those that are our children, grandchildren, that those that might be here in, in 2040. So um, how do we do this? You know, and, and what is the general plan? Anybody know? So let's cover real quickly. Um, general plan. So think of this as a tool. It highlights on a very high level a, a series of chapters, land use, circulation. Um, I don't know if you can read this, but it's land use, circulation, housing, urban design, conservation, open space, parks and recreation, safety, and noise. These are all chapters and elements that are in the general plan. And as we go forward in subsequent community conversations, we're going to be talking about each of these, uh, the policies that come in, into these topics. Once we have an adopted general plan, and, and this is something that we're going to have multiple years of community input on, then it gets implemented with specific plans. These are more focused geographic areas, and right now we have one example, which is the downtown specific plan area, and that's identified on the map at your table. But there are other specific plans in the city of San Mateo as well, and so these, this is just an example of the different tools that the city has which community input is part of that in, in terms of implementing the goals and policies and vision um, that's in the general plan. So you have the general plan, then more detail is provided in the specific plans, and then zoning code requirements. How many of you have done additions or remodels to your home? Yeah, so you know that their zoning code has detailed information about what needs to be met in order to, for projects to be done. So that applies to single family projects as well as multifamily commercial. These are the tools that help implement your vision and the goals that we have for the future. 
and what results is actually the sh reshaping or shaping aspects of our community that we enjoy and we're interacting with, whether it's streets, sidewalks, buildings. That's the connection between general plan at a policy level and what we see in the built environment and what we uh, sort of live with. Okay, so you have this also on a printed sheet of paper in front of you, but I want to re read this real quickly because this is something that came out from multiple community meetings. Uh, we had, I think, nine community meetings and workshops in addition to planning commission, city council, and general plan subcommittee meeting to come up with this vision statement. So uh, San Mateo is a vibrant, livable, diverse, and healthy community that respects the quality of its neighborhoods, fosters a flourishing economy, is committed to equity, and is a leader in environmental sustainability. And our shared values are diversity, balance, inclusivity, prosperity, and resiliency. And so as we think about the next steps and where we need to go in the future, keep the vision statement, sort of that's, that's our goal, you know, so keep that in mind as we go forward. And where we are right now is actually fairly early in the process. You know, uh, we will go through to 2023 for adoption. But throughout this entire process is community engagement and community input, and that's why you guys are here tonight, is for us to, for you to share your information, your ideas on the maps and, uh, all of that is going to be part of the process. <clears throat> so just um, a few photos from some of the community engagement activities that we've had. Um, we've had meetings and workshops. Um, we've also been out to the community at Phil's, Pizza, uh, Phil's um, the library, Central Park, the train station. So I'm trying to just take off different places that we've been to try to meet our community members where they're at and where they're living and trying to bring people into understanding what a general plan is and how important it is to participate in this process. So if you know folks that has not you know, participated, definitely encourage them to participate. <clears throat> so um, as I mentioned, we will share some information about our uh, regional and local context. And so just very uh, generally, um, San Mateo has grown and population wise uh, from 1950s to 2018, the blue bar that you see at the bottom is San Mateo. So back in 1950, we were less than 50,000 K in terms of population. Right now in 2018, we're over 100,000 people in, in San Mateo. And so uh, San Mateo has grown during that time. Uh, the county itself has grown as well. And so you can see where we are in relation to the county. <clears throat> The other thing is uh, the, the folks that are in San Mateo have changed. Our demographics have changed. And this is uh, countywide. We don't have any numbers for San Mateo City. And so we're using county uh, information. But you, what's interesting is if you look at the 65 and older, that's the green line, the trajectory of that has uh, gone up. And it's expected to continue to increase. <clears throat> and as we're thinking about the future, we also need to think about the population that we need to plan for. And so this, seeing this big picture is actually really helpful. And it's something that's good to keep in mind. <clears throat> um, a few other things that you might see out in the newspapers or in studies or articles is uh, the terminology of housing, uh, jobs and housing balance. Um, th this is a ratio that shows a relationship about where people work <clears throat> and where people live. And sometimes you'll have people who live and work in the same community. Sometimes you'll have people who live and work in different communities, and that actually contributes to the congestion that we see on the roads today. So uh, that's one indicator. Um, <clears throat> and right now, in the entire peninsula, we have more jobs than housing, and that is uh, leading to longer commute. And so if you have to commute, just for example, if you have to commute out to Tracy, because that's where you live, but your work is in San Mateo City, your, that trip, that two hour drive from Tracy to here is adding to that commute. So that's just one example. Um, generally speaking, most communities should aim for a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, so that's something just to keep me in mind as we plan for the future and think about the future. So other common ways to measure, <clears throat> there's jobs and household ratios. Literally, it's number of jobs to number of households in a community. Um, another one is jobs to employed residence ratio, and you might wonder what employed residence. So we have about 54% of the San Mateo population, um, the residents that are in San Mateo that are employed. So the remaining portion that are not employed are, your, you know, there's uh, kids who are too young to work, 
or there are folks that are retired or financially independent and don't need to work. But you know, out of uh, the ratios that are for San Mateo, the employed residents is 54% uh, of our San Mateo population is employed. <clears throat> so uh, looking a little bit more broadly, we're looking at jobs created versus housing built uh, in the city of San Mateo. And so these are uh, local numbers um, from 2010 to 2017. And 2010 is when we last adopted our general plan. And so part of this includes a period of recession, but uh, if you look at the net new jobs, it's about 16,773. Net new housing is, uh, this is housing units built, so 2,244. It does not include the housing units that are in the pipeline, and so that's, that's a separate number. There's also, uh, uh, because of the housing that's being created, there's also new residents, so that's about 5,834. And then uh, net new employed residents, uh, at, so that's a percentage of the new residents that are here that are employed, and that's 3,151. <clears throat> and then uh, estimated growth for San Mateo. This is thinking ahead as, we, as we're looking into 2040, uh, our population is projected to increase. Um, these numbers are coming from our regional agency, ABAG, and by 2040, it's estimated that San Mateo will have a net new residents of 25,000 to 28,000. So that's something that we need to, to plan for. Um, out of that is net new household, and this is using a ratio of about 2.6 residents per household. And so that's 8,000 to 12,000 net new households that we need to plan for. Um, think of them as housing units. Um, and then jobs, around 10,000 net new jobs by 2040. <clears throat> These are ABAB projections, and it's likely, you know, they're estimates. Um, estimates will change over time, and so these numbers are expected to change and potentially grow. <clears throat> so future housing needs, um, ABAG and MTC are collaborating, and the estimates that we're getting uh, from them is that by 2040, the San Mateo would have um, a, a total uh, household of 50,830. That's inclusive of the 30,000, almost 40,000 households that are currently in, in San Mateo today. Um, again, you know, uh, this number is a little bit different from the number that you saw before you. The 8,000 to 9,000 additional housing units, this is factoring in uh, projects that are currently going through the entitlement process and they're in the pipeline. And so what we took, you know, we took the other number from the other slide minus the 2,000 or so that are in the pipeline, and that's how we came up with 8,000 to 9,000 uh, additional housing units that's needed through 2040. Um, again, this is uh, estimates. It will change. So as we think about uh, changes, growth does have impacts on infrastructure and services. And so that's something that we also need to keep in mind, but it's not something that the city does by itself. You know, so a lot of the infrastructure projects that we see, um, congestion that's on the freeways, that's actually within Caltrans jurisdiction. So Caltrans actually has a Highway 101 express lane project that they're working on, and that's intended to connect the San Mateo segment from San Bruno to Santa Clara County, that border, and then connect to the um, express lane project that's in Santa Clara County. So that's one thing that the state uh, Caltrans is working on. Additionally, Caltrain, is they have a business plan and part of that includes electrification. With that electrification project includes an increase in capacity, so increasing the number of riders that can be handled by the system. Um, locally, uh, San Mateo City also has a, 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 a you know, list of projects that we're working on concurrently with the general plan update. There's a bike master plan, climate action plan. The city also has some funding for childcare and so that's uh, interim funding that's available to partner with uh, local providers. The Parks Department also has a recreation facility strategic plan that's looking at all the recreation facilities that are in the city of San Mateo and planning for the future. Um, Clean Water Program is a $1 billion project that Public Works staff, I think there's a few folks here from Public Works today, um, that's leading that. And that's intended to upgrade our wastewater treatment plant and be able to handle um, some growth that's expected, that's projected in the future. Um, as we go forward, you know, if the growth is more than what's expected, you, we will need to adjust that, but the idea is to plan for the future. 
Uh, one other thing is a rail corridor plan. This was adopted by the city in 2005 and will cover some of the projects that have been completed uh, in the rail corridor plan. But this is our local effort to look at the problems that we have today in terms of congestion and housing and try to uh, have projects that can uh, be located closer to transit and be able to have some benefits. And so we'll cover that in a little bit. So one other thing is commute mode. Uh, what's interesting here is uh, you're looking at uh, the drivers, the commuters who are driving alone uh, in 2017. This number is a lot, 70%, uh, it's still a lot. But what's interesting is that you'll see uh, there's a percentage of workers who are working from home um, telecommuting, and then uh, an increase in the number of um, commuters who are taking alternative modes of transportation, whether it's carpool, taking public transit, walking or bicycling. These numbers were not uh, available um, in, in it, it was available, but it wasn't this high in 2010. You know, and so what we're seeing, and you can go back to the source, you can see the change in the way that people are choosing to commute has changed over time. <clears throat> Uh, the other thing, and this is the local projects that uh, I had mentioned earlier. So this is transit-oriented development that's part of the uh, rail corridor plan. What you see is actually the red is if you had the same project, but it was built um, in a conventional development, you know, so not necessarily located near transit, you know, what are the trip rates that would have resulted if you had a conventional, if that project, that same building was built elsewhere. So conventional trip, you know, is the red bar. You can see the number of trips that would have been projected if it was conventional development. With the TOD project, these are the three projects that we are using as an example. Peninsula Station, uh, this is 400 to 450 Concar is the Heinz office development. And then Bay Meadows, uh, the last two projects are not fully occupied, but, no, but the numbers that you see before you are the uh, conventional development for the portions of the building that are occupied, that are built. And so, um, you know, it's, what you see is under conventional development, there would be a lot more uh, trips being generated by those projects versus the, the blue and the green. Um, <clears throat> the blue is basically targets that the project was intended and it's conditioned upon the developer to try to meet. And then the actual trips is those that are noted in green. So the city is continuing to monitor those projects as we go forward. And so um, I just wanted to show this in case uh, People are not familiar with these projects in San Mateo. So we're gonna move on to the next part of it, which is your exercise. Thank you, Julia. Okay. Thank you, Julia. Thank you again, everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're just gonna take a few more minutes to uh, explain what we're here to do tonight, and then we can let you take over and um, get to talking to each other and doing your exercise, because that's, I think, what we're all most excited about. My name is Joanna Jansen. I work at PlaceWorks. We're the consultant helping the city with the overall general plan update process. And I'm gonna take just a few slides to tell you a little bit about uh, what we're doing here tonight. So you probably already noticed that you have a map on your table. Uh, and the reason that this is a map-based exercise is that one very important piece of the general plan itself is the general plan land use designation map. So this map, the colors uh, and the designations on this map lay the groundwork for what can be built where in San Mateo, uh, what types of buildings, or what types of uses, and at what intensities. Uh, so it's a very important piece of the overall plan, and it sets the, the guidance for what's then developed into more detail in the zoning code and in some of the other planning documents that Julia mentioned. But this is where it all starts. And as part of the overall general plan update, we're also going to be considering whether this map needs to have any changes to it. And so that's what we're here in the very first step tonight to talk with you about by, by kind of rolling up our sleeves and starting to look at um, the map itself. Uh, before I talk a, a little more detail about exactly what we're going to do tonight, I want to explain how tonight and how the study areas exercise that we're doing tonight fits into the overall land use alternatives um, exercise that we're going to be working through for several several more months uh, here. This is going to be a very careful, a very thorough process, and I want to explain um, where we are at the very first step of it tonight. So we're going to choose, um, at the end of this process, we're going to ultimately end up with 
some study areas identified. Um, and within those study areas, we're going to then come back to you and to the community at a meeting like this to figure out a range of alternatives within those study areas, a range of different possible future scenarios within those study areas to consider for how San Mateo might look and feel in the year 2040. We're going to go through a process to create those alternatives. We're going to go through a process to then finalize and confirm that those are the range of alternative future scenarios that we want to study. And then we're going to go away and evaluate and do a lot of work to compare um, those alternatives. And that, that evaluation is going to consider things like the overall character of the alternative, uh, traffic impacts, impacts on utilities and important public services like schools and public safety, environmental sustainability, the fiscal health of the city, a whole range of different um, impacts that we know are important to the community to understand. And we're going to bring those back to you again and talk to you about the results of the evaluation and some of the pros and cons that we uncovered about the range of alternatives as we did our analysis. And then based on that information, we want to hear from you about what you like and don't like about that range of alternatives. And that will guide us through your input to a preferred alternative that ultimately will be refined and will become the basis for a revisions to the general plan land use map. So we're at the very first step of that long and complex process tonight. And that's, that's what we're here to do. So for that first step, we have a, a, a number of opportunities for input. We had a workshop just like this one on Saturday over at the main library, and we're here with you all tonight. Uh, after tonight, the next step in this process is going to be a meeting of the general plan subcommittee. They're meeting on June uh, 26th, again at the library uh, on that evening. And then we'll go to the planning commission and then to the, ultimately to the city council as we continue to accumulate input. Um, and throughout that uh, time, we're also going to have opportunity for you to submit comments online. Uh, we're going to be launching a, a similar map-based exercise online that you can participate in and then you can share with friends and neighbors who aren't able to be at one of our face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, and of course, we're always submitting, uh, excuse me, we're always accepting your written comments that are submitted um, through the website or even through mail uh, at strivesanmateo.org. So tonight, as you talk to your friends and neighbors at the table with you and you think about creating your, uh, providing your input for what areas should be study areas, um, here's some of the things that, that you might think about, some of the things that we think about as planners when we think about San Mateo in 2040. Um, what areas are the most likely to change? Uh, areas, um, as Julia pointed out, some of the recent development that's happened near San Mateo's transit stations has been um, relatively successful at meeting targets gets for reducing uh, trips in, in vehicles. So that might be a place to look if you're concerned about um, locating, studying how development might function in study areas that are close to transit. You might think about places where buildings or uses are vacant or outdated or et cetera. Um, and those could be the, the basis for a fruitful um, alternatives discussion. And in addition to that, you have the option of identifying for us places that you feel um, should stay the same. So your facilitator at your table will help guide you through marking up the map to um, help identify areas both where you think might be the right type of areas to accommodate change and also if there's areas that feel important to you to stay the same. We want to hear that as well. Before you um, dive into drawing on the map, which I'm, I hope you will do and I encourage you to do, uh, you might want to spend a few minutes talking with your group about some of the factors that I just mentioned. So what are the things that feel important to you as you're identifying study areas? What are some of the characteristics, not necessarily looking at the map, but just in general, um, how might you think about um, identifying study areas? And do your other people at the table feel the same way? Do they have different ideas about what makes a, a good study area? Uh, and the, the key here, I think, is that it's just that. It is a study area. So drawing something on your map tonight does not mean that it's going to change. Uh, it just means that it's going to be studied. So we want to find out how it, what, what kinds of change might be, have the potential to happen there and what might be some of the good outcomes and some of the bad outcomes if change did ultimately happen there. So this is really just about keeping an open mind and exploring possibilities for areas that could be um, studied. 
we're going to have time for you to both talk about what makes a good study area and then also to draw some of those study areas on your map, working with everybody in your group together to do that. Uh, and then there's some time at the end when your facilitator will work with you to summarize what your group has talked about and then um, come up here and offer us all the succinct report back from your table so you'll get a chance to hear what all the other groups did and see how it's different or the same as what your group talked about. So to do this exercise, uh, we have some materials that I want to just orient you to very briefly, and your facilitator can certainly answer additional questions if you have them. The centerpiece here, kind of literally and figuratively, is the base map that you have on your table. That's the kind of poster-sized map of San Mateo. The area inside, the black dashed line, is uh, the city limits of San Mateo, uh, and the, the green areas are parks and open space. You probably already figured that out. The orange areas are schools. That includes both public and private schools. Uh, the Caltrain stations are all mapped. We're showing the approximate future location of the Hillsdale um, train station, and we're also showing a half mile radius around all of the Caltrain stations, just to kind of give you an idea of what, what constitutes near the train station, more or less. Um, that's definitely not a hard and fast line, but just a general area. Uh, and then that includes the train stations in Burlingame and Belmont to the north and south. The pink line is the downtown specific plan area. And then within that and immediately south of that, there's some brown lines. Those are historic districts. So uh, that might be something for you to keep in mind as you're considering study areas. And then finally, the lavender parcels on the map. Those are properties where the property owner or an interested party has approached the city uh, and indicated that they're interested in participating in this general plan update process and studying uh, what might happen on the future future of these sites. So we've heard some specific property owner interest from those uh, lavender parcels. Um, <clears throat> but again, uh, anything on the map tonight is just kind of a first blush for identifying the study sites that you want, you think would be good to evaluate. In addition to capturing your feedback on the map, your facilitators have a kind of 11 by 17 note taking sheet to capture maybe some of your ideas or input that's not map based. <coughs> And then you have an aerial photo of San Mateo for reference, and you have the current general plan land use map um, for reference, not the one with all the colors on it. Uh, and then, of course, if you have any additional comments that you want to provide, uh, hopefully when you came in, you got a comment card that has a space for written comments on the front of it. And then it also has, you'll notice, a map on the back of it. So if you have additional map-based comments that you want to provide separate from or in addition to what your group works on, you have that option um, as well. And then finally, there's index cards on the table. If you have any questions about the process, about the presentation tonight, any other questions, jot those down on your index index cards will come around and collect those and make sure that we share the information um, with everybody. So last moment before we get started um, with your exercise and let you guys have a chance to talk, uh, I just want to offer these guidelines for your conversation. We want to make sure, uh, as, as Drew and Julia said right up front, that this is a welcoming and respectful and inclusive event and everybody has a chance to make their ideas and, and voices heard. So um, just offering these guidelines for your conversation. They're also on your agenda uh, in case you need a, a reminder, a refresher. And I want to just close by saying again how grateful we are to everybody for being here. It's a beautiful evening, and I know there's other things going on that are of great interest to many of you. Um, so thank you so much for being here, um, and I welcome uh, and look forward to your input. So thank you very much. I was with uh, table four, and um, we, we had a good conversation. Um, the areas where majority of the group agreed, uh, areas that should change or potentially change or should be at least studied, um, included the Bridgepoint Shopping Center and the office parks uh, around that area. Um, there are other areas that we had discussed were the um, Campus Drive, uh, the, the Laurelwood Shopping Center, but kind of down towards the, the road where the office buildings are. 
Um, also, El Camino between 9th Avenue down to Belmont. Um, that should be an area that we should look at a little bit more. And also um, the area along Palm and B Street, where those two streets intersect. Um, we should probably take a look at that. The areas where we were a little bit more uh, split are the the area for the um, around the Hillsdale Inn and the office uh, apartment buildings around there, and as well the as as well as the um, uh, the San Mateo Expo Center and that whole area. We thought that uh, the the center should be kept, but also there are, could be opportunities because of the the large amount of surface parking uh, for for other uses there. Um, and one, one area that we really felt should be preserved are the small uh, service, commercial service areas which are along um, the railroad tracks along um, South Delaware. Those, that should be preserved to uh, keep the businesses um, from leaving. And uh, that, that sums it up. Thanks. And um, just to start off, we kind of wanted to address a certain priorities. So two of our biggest priorities were preserving the existing suburban character um, that a lot of people have moved to San Mateo a long time ago um, for, um, while also maintaining the idea of having that equal ratio of jobs to housing balance. So maybe a little more focus on housing to ratchet that uh, number up. So um, starting off, we looked at um, the map grew over time, so we started off with just identifying this little corridor between El Camino Real and the railroad tracks, and then it slowly grew so that we were thinking, oh, maybe we can, we can consider studying this area as well, and then out a little bit more, so we thought that this area would be a good spot to look at in the center of San Mateo, as well as then the downtown area. Um, and then in addition, we looked at these two areas down here um, with some underutilized office space here as well as um, just some office and uh, high commercial right now um, that had potential for different uses. Um, and then we had some differing opinions on um, this golf course right here, which we thought maybe uh, people besides golfers could enjoy it as a different use. And then as well as uh, there was a different uh, differing opinions on this Alameda de, Polga, uh, de las Polgas as having multiple, uh, because it is a thoroughfare right now, um, looking at different options there. And that was it. All right, so um, my group's sort of main refrain was that they really wanted to focus on underutilized areas that have good access to transit and services, but there was general agreement that they wanted a very thoughtful uh, approach to how these areas are studied and potentially changed so that uh, affordable spaces and services that serve the community, retail that serves the community, even things like auto and vet, uh, veterinarian shops that serve the community uh, are still there and available for folks in San Mateo. And so, uh, some of the areas that were agreed on for further study were the downtown uh, with a mind of still preserving those historic aspects and some of the neighborhoods that are in the surrounding. Uh, there was also uh, an agreement that the area around the event center should be looked at, but like one of the other groups that the event center should be maintained with perhaps some new uses uh, in the surrounding area and with a special mind to how that could impact to, uh, traffic at the interchange uh, just to the north. Uh, the area around 25th Avenue was also uh, uh, marked as an area for a potential consideration, um, not again necessarily for wholesale change, but for finding ways to enhance that community serving retail. And then similarly, uh, some of the shopping centers uh, down toward the southern end of the city and then here along 101, thinking about how they may be able to be better used. Uh, some areas where there was a little bit more disagreement were the, the sort of office uh, area here near the community college as well as the ca campus itself. Uh, and then also some of the uses along 101 and the front end road where it was thought maybe there could be some, some upgraded uses there but also concerns about maintaining uh, affordable spaces. And then uh, I kind of let my group go wild and use blue uh, and that was to show that there was interest in enhanced uh, east-west transit uh, along Hillsdale. And similarly there was interest in enhancing transit along El Camino Real. Uh, thank you all very much. Okay, so we were at table five. 
Uh, some of the concerns that we uh, discussed before identifying study areas were concerns about traffic as a Oh, <laughs> uh, concerns about traffic as a consequence of housing, uh, how additional housing would uh, affect schools, um, and trying to concentrate uh, multiple types of businesses in residential areas so that some of those small businesses uh, could stay in business. Uh, some of the study areas we identified were along El Camino Real from uh, 9th Avenue all the way to the city border. Uh, we focused on a lot of the uh, sites identified in purple and had a lot of consensus in our group. Other sites included uh, Third and Norfolk, um, and then a couple sites within the downtown. And uh, our group decided uh, it was important to conserve the historical, uh, the two historical areas that are in and near downtown. Um, other areas included the Expo Center and Storm Drainage Area uh, to be looked at as a study area and um, a focus on transit areas uh, throughout the city. So uh, table seven, one of the primary concerns uh, raised by the table almost immediately was to preserve um, and maintain our um, open space and parks uh, in our city. Um, I think there's uh, an overriding feeling uh, from the residents at the table that um, the city's becoming a little over uh, urbanized and so we want to preserve those areas um, that we do have. Um, there was, uh, in response to addressing some of the housing needs that were stated in the presentation, uh, some of our group believe that uh, uh, a way to resolve that is to increase building heights uh, we had uh, other residents uh, at our table that believe that our uh, building heights should be maintained as they currently are. Um, but there were opportunities at specific uh, locations and TOD locations where uh, increased building heights could be explored. Um, passages um, is not a uh, project that's been approved yet, but um, there is a strong feeling that um, this area here um, should be, where is passages? I think it's over here, should uh, maintain uh, a lower density and not be uh, allowed to develop at a higher density. Um, there's lots of concerns regarding um, congestion and traffic impacts in the area. Um, one area where there was strong consensus is um, developing um, the area behind Safeway, um, Palm Ave and B Street. This is an area that could be revitalized. Um, uh, a certain type of development, uh, or excuse me, mixed use development was mentioned as a ideal type of development to be brought to the, uh, the neighborhood there uh, where it could uh, multiple uses could be addressed in terms of uh, neighborhood commercial serving retail as well as uh, uh, housing. Along uh, 25th Ave and 28th Street, um, there is a consensus among the group that this the, resi the low density, low density single-family uh, residential neighborhood, that feeling, there's, there's pressure in this area from uh, cross traffic, uh, cross town traffic flowing through and some of the development along the, the commercial corridor there, and they want to preserve that, um, that single-family uh, feel in that neighborhood. Um, and so they're looking for uh, development to be to maintain uh, a lower density. Um, and what else do we have? I think that might be it. I think that's it. Thank you, Bill. I'm sure everyone will be surprised that Table 6 talked a lot about traffic and housing, um, which has obviously been, you know, topics that have come up at, at most of the tables here. So I guess I'll kind of start off uh, with some of the more uh, larger themes that, that were discussed. Uh, first being more, more affordable housing and, and at all different income levels. Uh, there was a lot of 
sort of diverging opinions on, on how we get there uh, and where the development occurs. So um, another thing well, the, in, in the first presentation, we, we talked about the housing, the jobs housing gap, excuse me, uh, if I can get that out. Uh, and how do we close that? How do we uh, make uh, the housing development catch up with where the jobs are and where the, where the new uh, retail and office space is being built? Um, so uh, to, to look at our map here, um, Sorry. Uh, so uh, we talked a lot about uh, the corridor of El Camino, uh, kind of where Hillsdale is. Also, there was a lot of talk about the, the purple sites. Uh, we went into those quite a bit, uh, trying to decide uh, what was being asked of, of the study uh, and, and what needed to be studied in, in each of those sites. So there was a lot of discussion around that, um, especially uh, these down here close to the future Hillsdale Cal sta Caltrain Station. Excuse me. Um, and then there was some talk in the Bel Mateo area for uh, no, and another thing that came up, I'm sorry, the cord here, uh, is, it's trying to preserve the affordable housing that we do have uh, and also the preservation of, of the community's character and a lot of things so that we're not uh, building 10 story uh, tall buildings. I think I'm seeing some heads shaking over there that I got that. Um, and then there's a couple areas here uh, close to the downtown area and right where uh, 92 and, and, and 101 meet that they wanted to see a lot more traffic study done uh, where there's a lot of development obviously going on right here around the Hayward Park station with Station Park Green and several of the other, other developments that are going on right there. Um, there's uh, a, a, a red area up here uh, which I believe is north central uh, or kind of close to there uh, to study for preservation of, of the affordable homes that that are currently there um, and anti and studying displacement to try to keep uh, those the folks that who live there from being displaced by larger development um, let's see where else did I have there's uh, another area here where the uh, the Jax is uh, the Bur is it Burrell uh, on on El Camino that there was there was some some agreement that that kind of needed to be studied but uh, a lot of a lot of what we talked about at the table was that when new developments are coming in the the amenities that that folks see in their communities are going away or becoming harder to access uh, that goes into the traffic discussion certainly um, and because it's taking longer to get from place to place uh, in the city those amenities while they may not go away they're much harder to access because it takes a much longer time to, to get to them um, so I think that was Kind of the most of what we discussed. Seeing more heads shaking. Yes. So, yeah, that was about Great it. Job, Thank you. Hello. Um, I'm uh, the representative of table number eight in the back. Um, and uh, in following the tables before us, we are seeing we had talked about very similar things. Um, trying to stay along ma main um, transit lines. The, uh, the path down El Camino Real was sort of the, the first main um, corridor to talk about. And um, as we went down, it started to get touchier as we got to places where we were identifying character that we didn't want to change. That, and and was, there was kind of a wrestling between spaces that um, we really like the character of the area, but um, maybe it could the space could be used, um, the uh, it could be improved on. Um, so th there was this sort of like push and pull of, um, do we circle those areas or uh, with with a purple or a pink pen, or do we preserve them entirely and don't um, even take a look? So um, we kind of got through that in some of these sites. Um, another kind of contentious spot was the golf course up here where, um, and just in, in the open space um, areas in general where um, we really didn't want to change the fact that we have open space at, at all. Um, and in the case of the golf course, the beauty um, of that space, mature trees, the restaurant um, are all really key things to keep, um, but the potential to open it up to more users than 
solely golfers was a, uh, a topic. Um, so um, some key spots along 25th Avenue, that was one of the like kind of the character areas where um, we might want to uh, preserve that, but also investigate how that could get improved. Um, uh, and um, maybe the, the sort of final kind of category was, was larger areas where we had a lot of parking that um, the, the space was just not uh, used as densely as it could be, potentially. Um, and I think that is uh, the majority of what we covered. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for those reports back. I think we heard a lot of commonalities among these tables and some new and different original ideas at, at some coming from your tables as well. Um, this has been very, very valuable for us. Your input is extremely important in shaping this process. Um, so thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, thank you for your thoughtful input. I really hope that you'll stay involved. Uh, and please keep track of us at strivesanmateo.org uh, and encourage all your friends and neighbors to do the same. Thank you very much for being here.